Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. So Brandon here with another great business to discuss on this episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. Today's guest is Joe, and he's selling his Amazon Associates business on the Empire Flippers marketplace. So welcome to the show, Joe. And how are you doing today? Hi, Brandon. Thanks for having me. Doing well. Glad to be here. Uh, It's really great to hear that you're doing well and really nice to have you on the call with us to discuss this business you've created. But before we give away too much of the details, let's go into a quick overview of the business. So it is an Amazon Associates business in the apparel and accessories and equipment niches created in May 2019. The average monthly revenue for the business is $4,832 and makes an average of $4,752 per month in net profit. For everyone listening, you can visit empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing 51429 to learn more about the business, or you can unlock this listing and start your due diligence if you're interested in purchasing this asset. So now that I've given a general overview of the business, what's included in the sale is the primary domain and all site content and files, two additional domains used as 301 redirects, and social media accounts for Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. So Joe, can you tell us a little bit about your background in building and running online businesses? Yeah, sure. So I started my venture into Amazon affiliate marketing in November 2015 when I was living in a tiny little apartment, barely making ends meet for a second income to pay off my student loans and for my master's degree a little bit quicker. And the first site that I made kind of took off at the time, which was really nice. So then I decided to build a couple more sites and a couple more sites. And along the way, just been selling them as they've been growing and you know, the business has been really good to me. And so five years later now, on my own, I do it full time. I have several successful sites, uh, including this one. And yeah, it's been a pretty great journey. Yeah, it sounds like a great journey on, you know, starting back from 2015. I'm sure you've seen quite a bit of change through the content site space over the years as well, too. Now, where did you get the idea to start this specific business? Was it just through your experience in growing those other niche sites that you found some potential within the apparel and accessories and equipment niches? Yeah, so I was checking my Amazon earnings for an unrelated site one day and saw that a high ticket item had sold through there that was not in that niche. And so I saw that it was in, you know, the niche that this business I'm selling is in. So I started exploring that and saw that there wasn't much competition in there. And so I kind of just pounced on it and created this website back in May 2019 and have uh, grown it from there. That's really great to see that you found that opportunity and you were able to jump on it at that time. Now, why choose this specific business model with Amazon Associates? Why not do maybe something like a drop shipping or maybe an Amazon FBA business within this niche? Sure. So the thing that I like most about Amazon Associates is that you don't need to have any kind of overhead and no capital to begin with. If I was going to do, say, an FBA business, obviously I would need to you know, have some capital for inventory and then focus probably more on direct advertising rather than relying on free Google SEO. But like I said, when I started the business, I had no money. I was barely scraping by. So that's kind of been my model ever since then is just relying on Amazon Associates because you don't need any money to begin with. And frankly, Amazon, they are fantastic sellers and they do all the selling with you. You just got to refer the traffic to them, which this business is very good at. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. You know, not having to worry about the e-commerce side or even the logistics side of the product that you happen to be producing content for is is always a, a bonus within their platform. Now, if the business is doing so great at this time, Joe, why is it that you decided you'd like to sell it? So I just moved to the Bay Area about six months ago now. And as I'm sure anyone listening to this is very familiar with, uh, Bay Area, California is very expensive. And I happen to be with a wonderful partner. And so it's kind of looking to cash out on this and put money towards a down payment on a home out here. So as much as I'd like to, you know, continue growing this, it would go a long way to, uh, you know, securing my starting my roots here, I guess you could say. 
Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. As we spoke, you know, before this call, I'm pretty familiar with California, having grown up there myself. And yeah, the Bay Area can get pretty expensive, that's for sure, depending on the area you'd like to stay. Yeah, so completely understand that. Now, was there anything that you learned while growing this business that you plan on applying to future businesses down the road? Yeah, so I do have several other Amazon sites that are more in the earlier stages that I do apply my business model to. So it's pretty much just using the same techniques across all of my different niches and websites that I'm in. But with this particular site in general, as you said, the two additional domains are included as 301 redirects. This site showed me the power of using 301 redirects. So that is something I have been using and will continue to do so in the future. Yeah, it's really interesting that you're able to kind of learn firsthand and have firsthand experience with 301 redirecting you know, domains to boost your ranking as well. That's really interesting insight. I'm sure that will be helpful down the road. Now, on the flip side of that, was there anything that you tried with this business and it just didn't give you the ROI that you were expecting? Yes, I paid for some very expensive guest posts towards the beginning of when I started this site. And frankly, I don't think there was really any ROI on them. Yeah, I just didn't get really any ROI on those. So it's more I stopped doing those after trying them out on this site. And I'm talking about like $175 per guest post or something around that sort. It just didn't seem all that beneficial to me compared to doing, say, a 3-1 redirect or niche edits. Okay, that makes sense. You know, especially depending on the industry as well and what benefit you're getting from those guest posts could kind of weigh in either side, I guess. Now, have you ever tried something, you know, along the lines of like an email list or putting more effort into the social media channels to grow your marketing traffic in that form? Not with this website. When I originally got into SEO, I tried to do that. However, for me personally, it's not my strong aspect since I don't really understand social media. I don't use it in my personal life. So I found that it was a better use of my time and so therefore ROI for me to just focus on the organic Google search and bumping my rankings up in there. However, it is a definitely a great opportunity for the potential buyer to explore those avenues because I haven't done anything with them on this website. Okay. And have you tried an email list for this website or you haven't tried to set one up at all? No, not with this website. Got it. And then on the subject, since you had just mentioned it about focusing more on SEO, would you say the majority of the traffic for this business does come from organic search? Yeah, I think it's in the 90 percentile. Yeah, that's always great to see as well. And, you know, hypothetically speaking, Joe, if you were to keep this business and move forward with it, what are some of the ways that you would personally try and grow it? From a monetary standpoint, I would definitely go with adding display advertisements onto this site. I think it's excluding the most traffic, I think it's around 30000 a month, 25000 a month, something along that line. So that's an easily, what, 500 to 1000 bucks per month extra for doing pretty much nothing, which would be great. Additionally, I would search for other affiliate programs to join because the products in this niche, they are high value items. Therefore, if you were to go to another affiliate program, you know, to supplement the Amazon one, they could definitely pay a higher rate and have a good total value return per item sold. In terms of Content-wise, I would definitely add more how-to articles. I don't want to give away too much of other aspects of the apparel and accessories and equipment niches out there because there's a multitude of them that this site hasn't even begun to explore. And then, as you said, like the email list, social media. Personally, that's not something I'm good at doing. However, it's something that the buyer could do. Me, primarily, I would just focus on adding additional content and those kind of other apparel and accessories and equipment niches that are related to the overarching theme of the domain. No, that's really solid strategy and advice that our potential buyers that are listening to this call and looking at your business could take into consideration and another growth opportunity for them to also explore and having that already laid out for them is also a great value. Now, can you describe some of the typical work that you're doing on the business on a weekly basis at this time? Sure. So right now I spend maybe five to 10 minutes a week on the business and that's just going into the back end and updating plugins or the WordPress version. If there is anything to update, I haven't added content to this site, I don't think since probably around March or April of this past year, 2020. So it's pretty much just been growing on autopilot. So what that indicates to me as someone who's been in the industry for you know several years is that Google really loves this site if it's growing without me doing anything. So if the potential buyer were to pretty much do anything, they're going to be greatly rewarded in doing so. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Even just looking at the projections on your listing and seeing the earnings and the revenue and the site traffic as well, just on an upward projection, even just through these last two or three months showing almost double of what it was the same time last year is really great potential. I'm sure for any buyer that's looking at this can also see the value in that as well. Now, do you feel that there's any specific skill set that a buyer should have prior to acquiring this business from you? Yeah. I mean, just in general with any kind of SEO and Amazon Associates site, you need to have patience and be consistent in whatever actions that you take. If you want to grow the site, you know, keep publishing new content, keep doing keyword research and exploration to see what kind of additional content that you can add. I think that's probably nowadays the highest kind of ROI that you can get when running an Amazon site. Always be looking, of course, for, you know, guest posts that you can do or industry sites that you can get on or additional ways in which you can get traffic that's not totally reliant on Google, but mainly just consistency and patience. SEO is kind of a waiting game, so you may not see the you know fruits of your labor until three to six, nine, whatever months out. But if you're consistent and patient, you will definitely be rewarded. And that's advice I give to really anyone looking to go into SEO. And yeah, it seems to work. Absolutely. Yeah, it's tried and tested strategy, especially for SEO and for gaining ranking and within content site space for sure. Now on the flip side of, you know, some of the things that, you know, someone should definitely pay attention to, what do you feel are some of the potential risks associated with this business model that buyers should be aware of? Yeah. So with any Amazon associates and Google SEO content site, there's two main risks that everyone needs to be aware of before buying and being in this industry. The first is Google algorithm updates. They can come anytime. They can either be greatly rewarding or absolutely devastating or have no impact on your site. And there's really no way after you get impacted positively, negatively or neutrally, there's really no way to discern what happened since Google is very vague about their process. However, if for whatever reason your site you know, gets neutral or negatively impacted, just keep doing what you were doing and then the site usually recovers. And then the other thing is Amazon Associates. There's always the chance, you know, that they could change their fee structure. They had a fee structure change back in, it was either April or May of 2020, where they slashed rates pretty much in half. So yeah, if the old structure was still there, this site would be pulling probably like 15 grand a month. But so that's always the risk is that there's going to be a fee structure update. So that's kind of why it's important. Touched on it's The new buyers should, I think, kind of work to try and diversify their traffic sources. So the impact of any kind of Google update would be not as severe, you know, with the social email lists, even direct like form and stuff like that. And then in addition, if you were to have multiple revenue channels, such as display ads or other affiliate programs, again, that lessens the impact if there were an Amazon Associates fee rate change. Yeah, definitely solid advice and something that I'm sure most of those who are looking in the content side space should be now at least fairly aware of these types of risks as it's quite common knowledge at this point now. So Joe, are you willing to commit to a non-compete, meaning any future projects or current projects that you're in, you'll stay out of this specific niche? Yeah, that's not a problem. Perfect. And then how much support are you willing to offer potential buyers? Are you going with the typical 30 days of email and Skype support? Or did you have something in addition that you would like to add on to that? 30 days email and Skype support is fine. After the 30 days, if they just have a quick question here and there, that's fine. Frankly, in terms of actually running the site, the way I structured the site on the back end is it's very basic. So if anyone has any basic familiarity with WordPress, they won't have any problem running this. There's no visual editor. It's all done in classic editor with HTML. Very, very easy for any new buyer to run. And then I forgot to ask you this at the beginning. I'm sorry. Are you producing all of the content yourself? Or do you have a team of outsourced writers that you go to in order to produce the content? Everything is completely outsourced on this site. But like I said, I haven't added new content in almost a year now. So whoever purchases the site, they'll need to find their own writers if they're not going to be writing themselves. I have a few recommendations I can give if they want to use those people. Like right now, there's no team in place or anything. Got it. That makes sense. But I'm sure potential buyers that are listening to this call can see the value and you wanting to make sure that they're set up and properly migrated the business over and making sure that they can take it and push it to its full potential after that as well. Now, are you open to negotiating something like an earnout where you'll receive a large portion of the sales price up front and then smaller payments closing out the deal a couple months after that? For this site, I'm looking just cash only. 
Okay, got it. Now, just a few more sideline questions for you, Joe. What advice would you give to our listeners that you wish you knew when you first started this business? Oh, good question. One thing I wish I learned when I was first starting SEO and getting into Amazon Associates content building is to keep things simple. There's a lot of noise and information out there that are being pushed by gurus. And frankly, they're just trying to sell people their own products and trying to make it seem like SEO is so difficult. It's really not. I think the simpler you keep things and try not to get bogged down into the weeds, the more you can focus on actually growing the business rather than kind of living in the past and being like, oh my God, what did I did wrong? Or is this good enough? Frankly, like in terms of good enough, 90% is usually good enough. Perfection is kind of lower people's ROI. So just keep things simple and focus on growing the business. You can always refine things if needed. Yeah. Absolutely agree with you. As they say, you know, perfection equals poverty. So, you know, do yeah, do what you think is, you know, what's the right thing to do based on the knowledge you've gained at the time. And as you said, 90% of the time, it should be good enough. So yeah, no, I completely agree. You know, on the subject of, you know, not getting bogged down with information overload or people trying to sell products, was there any software or tools that you used personally that really helped you at the start of running this business? If the buyer's looking to expand into, you know, adding additional content on the site, that Ahrefs is an absolute must. To me, it's the best keyword research tool, competitor research tool that there is. I guess it can be on a little on the pricey side, but to me, it's totally worth it. I highly recommend that everyone uses that. Yeah, it's a, a daily tool I use of myself as well. And it's, yeah, the yeah. inside and the metrics that they give you, it's almost feels like you would have to be silly not to use it. So especially in yeah, content. It's kind of, it's a cheat code to making money. Exactly. Yeah, completely agree with you. So last question for you, Joe. So putting yourself in the shoes of a buyer, why do you feel that your business is worth buying? So just from a numbers perspective, if you look at the growth that the business has had year over year, or even just the last five, six months, the like earnings continue to grow, traffic continues to grow. As I'm sure any buyer is aware, there was a massive Google update in December that completely crushed a bunch of, you know, just run of the mill affiliate sites in many, many niches. However, this site, it persevered through the update and has continued to grow. Rarely do you see a site have higher revenue in January than December. That's not a seasonal site. So I think there's definitely something special here. Google absolutely loves this site. So If a buyer is willing or wants to, you know, invest in it, then they will certainly make a good amount of money, at least in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. As we mentioned earlier in the call, seeing the projections and your earnings and the site traffic and the numbers there just growing year on year or month actually is quite a great accomplishment, especially on your end to achieve and also great potential for a buyer that's looking at this listing as well. And to add on to that, today is February 16th. So we have half of the month worth of revenue data already. And we're trending the same daily revenue average that we did in January. And I'm sure any buyer would know, you know, in February for a non-seasonal content site, February is usually a little bit of a dip. Like, you know, consumers are kind of like, oh, shoot, we don't have money yet because we don't have a tax return, especially now during the pandemic. But the fact that revenue has maintained or say continued to be consistent from January into February is really just a testament of how strong this site is. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure our potential buyers that are looking at are also seeing that trend and can also really take that into consideration when considering this business as well. And that pretty much wraps up this call. Was there anything else that you'd like to share that I might have missed, Joe? Pertaining to site, no. I just want to really express how great this process with Empire Flippers has been. I've used a couple other brokerages, but I have to say that Empire Flippers is really going above and beyond in terms of how they've handled the listing for this site. So thank you, Brandon, and the rest of your team. And any buyer out there that's interested, more than happy to discuss with you this site. And yeah, I look forward to speaking with anyone interested. Awesome. Yeah, we all appreciate it as well, too. And it's kind of why we do this in the first place is to make sure that everyone's happy and everyone is able to accomplish their goals, not only personally, but business wise as well, too. So thank you again for that. And yeah, that's pretty much the call that we needed for today, Joe. Thanks again for jumping on and you know, looking forward to speaking with you here in the near future as well. Great. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. And all right, everyone, thanks for listening. To learn more and to see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing 51429. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. And once you've unlocked this listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about this business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey.